Hello and welcome. This is Heather Mannion with One Lambda, a Thermo Fisher scientific brand. Thank you for joining our webinar today. I'm very excited to introduce our featured guest speaker, Dr. Ashrith Guha. Dr. Guha is currently the medical director of MCS and heart transplant, as well as the director of pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure program at Houston Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas. His transplant clinical research interests include immunosuppression, desensitization therapies, and novel diagnostics in allograft rejection. In his presentation titled The Value of MMDX and Diagnostics Uncertainty for Patients with Heart Transplantation, a case-based presentation, Dr. Guha will discuss scenarios where MMDX heart is useful for assessing risk of injury or rejection post-transplant, as well as clinical application. During the presentation, please feel free to type any questions for Dr. Guha in the Q&A field. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. It is now my pleasure to turn today's program over to Dr. Guha. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. I am Ashit Guha. I'm the Medical Director of the Heart Transplant and the MCS program at uh, Houston Methodist Hospital. Today, I'll be talking to you about the value of MMDX in uh, diagnostic uncertainty uh, for patients with heart transplantation. These are uh, the disclosures for this presentation. And in this talk, we will be first going over the background uh, upon which uh, MMDX uh, was um, developed. And then we'll be going over the phenotypes which are described in the MMDX report. Uh, so we'll be going over the TCMR phenotypes, AMR phenotypes, and the injury phenotypes, and then we'll be getting into the patient examples. So as you all know, histopathology has been the gold standard for diagnosing rejection in heart transplantation. But we all know that inter-observer variability in making the diagnosis is a problem. A post-hoc analysis from the CARGO study, which uh, was... Uh, <clears throat> which looked at uh, agreement uh, between local and panel of pathologists uh, to diagnose rejection was only about 70%. Now, as you all know, cargo study uh, um, uh, looked at Alumab as a non-invasive marker of uh, uh, rejection. Now, when they, look, when they looked at the degree of agreement between the pathologists, local and panel of pathologists for greater than two hour rejection, the agreement was only 28%. So this is very, very poor agreement for making a diagnosis of rejection upon which we have to actually act and uh, treat patients. So why, what are the reasons? Why, uh, why is there a lack of agreement? Because one, there is non-specificity of features, which means there is similarity between early injury and rejection. And we all know that T-cell mediated rejection uh, is very common uh, within the first year and within the first three months where you do see early injury from um, uh, cold ischemia and also from brain death. Secondly, there are boundary issues with our binary classification because right now the way we diagnose ABMR or ACR, we have it in grades and when, we, uh, when there are these biopsy specimens where uh, they do not fall into these binary boundaries, it becomes harder to put a label on. So this brings us to, you know, what is the current uh, stat, uh, state of uh, assessment of rejection and how can these molecular tools help us in getting a uh, better uh, representation or better assessment of the true disease process activity at the stage. So I want you to look at uh, uh, the, uh, on your left side, the conventional assessment, which is uh, what we do right now with histopathology uh, uh, assessment of your biopsy. And on the right side is the molecular assessment, which is what MMDX adds. And uh, we still have to understand how to use this molecular assessment uh, to supplement what we already know from conventional assessment and whether the molecular assessment will give us more data uh, than what we already know from conventional assessment. 
So to understand this better, I think we first have to go over the mechanisms of rejections uh, so that we can understand what you know how MMDX was developed and how we can use it. So as we all know, um, uh, for mechanism of uh, T cell mediated rejection, naive and cognate T cells are first stimulated by donor antigen, and then they go on to become effector T cells. And these effector T cells home in on the uh, on the graft and interact with APCs. Once uh, these uh, um, uh, effector T cells interact with the APCs, both of them get activated and the activated APCs and the effector T cells then secrete mediators which cause inflammation and injury resulting in rejection. So when you're looking for a molecular signature of TCMR, then uh, they are usually these, uh, the genes from these effector T cells, which are upregulated. And uh, some of the genes, uh, genetic, uh, genes that we see uh, which are upregulated are TRBC1, CD2, and co-stimulatory molecules such as uh, CTLA4. And um, uh, now just a brief overview of the mechanism of antibody mediated rejection. So there is uh, oftentimes a donor specific antibody against the human leukocyte antigen, which activates the NK cells and the complement system. Even though traditionally we have believed that complement system plays a large role, now there is more recognition that there is um, uh, injury which is mediated by NK cells. And they, this could explain the phenomenon of C4D negative ABMR. And uh, these DSAs are predominantly bound to vasculature in the endothelium. And the ensuing injury, which is either caused through complement mediated mechanisms or independent mechanisms, cause endothelial injury. So the end result of a, you know, uh, is microcirculatory inflammation, which is really the hallmark of ABMR. So when uh, uh, the mRNAs uh, are studied uh, in these biopsy specimens of ABMR, the transcripts which have been upregulated uh, are uh, all related to either activated NK cells or damaged endothelial cells or interferon, ga uh, interferon gamma-induced genes. <clears throat> now, uh, the hallmark of rejection, uh, whether TCMR or ABMR, uh, is myocardial injury. And of course, myocardial injury can be independent of rejection also. And I think it is very important uh, when we are trying to phenotype that we are able to uh, differentiate all of those. So when you look at myocardial injury itself, it is characterized by infiltration of monocytes and macrophages. They affect the extracellular matrix, parenchyma, and the microvasculature. And there is loss of normal parenchyma. So when they're looking for a molecular signature of it, there is upregulation of uh, mRNA or, or um, related to these genes, mostly uh, from uh, macrophages and monocytes. And then there is down regulation of normal transcripts, which are expressed in healthy hearts, suggesting that there is injury to the, um, to the normal uh, myocardium. So uh, a brief uh, overview of how MMDX was developed. So it was developed through a multi-center prospective study, which was interheart. Had about uh, it was um, iterative development. So the first round of development had about three hundred plus samples. Then the second round of development had about eight hundred myocardial samples, and now they have about thirteen twenty samples in the latest iteration. And they measured mRNA expression using microarray technology and used unsupervised machine learning and supervised machine learning using archetypal and principal component analysis to uh, come up with eight phenotypes based on gradation. Um, so in the no rejection phenotype, there were three um, uh, variants, which is normal, no rejection with minor AVMR-like changes, and no rejection but with early injury. 
TCMR related but possible TCMR and definitive TCMR and ABMR related or possible ABMR and definitive ABMR. So just an overview of what happens when you collect a sample in the lab, uh, then you know you place it immediately in RNA later, and then uh, it's shipped, and the RNA is extracted, uh, you know it's cleaned up, and then quality control, and uh, then they label the RNA. There's hybridization, and then they're uh, uh, sent to these scan arrays and eventually you get this MMDX report, which uh, uh, is actually analyzed by a pathologist and signed up. So currently, uh, because it's been done in very few standardized sites, there is reasonable uh, uh, homogeneity and less heterogeneity in uh, uh, the process, uh, uh, process of uh, these tissues and eventually uh, getting the report. So the MMDX report looks like this. This is just a uh, sample report. And uh, I just want you to uh, the, uh, look at the graph below. So um, on um, so the, the first graph on the left is uh, there are two components, PC1 and PC2. Uh, and uh, <coughs> PC1 uh, goes from uh, left to right from no rejection to rejection on the, on, on the right. And uh, PC2 goes from ABMR on the top to TCMR uh, on, at the bottom. And on the right, there is two uh, principal components, PC2 and PC3. And here, um, again, uh, PC3 goes from no injury to injury from left to right and uh, from north to south, ABMR and TCMR on the PC2 axis. Um, so, and when you look at that yellow triangle, that is where the patient lies. So each of these dots represent all the patients who have been used uh, in this machine learning algorithm to map them out. And what um, uh, the MMDX report tells us is this patient uh, is very similar to all those other patients who were in the no rejection category. Uh, and uh, that's what even the report says that, you know, there's no ABMR, no TCMR, minimal parenchymal injury, uh, suggesting that maybe there's a little bit of injury pattern. Uh, <clears throat> and um, so that's how you interpret uh, this uh, report. And it does give you all the transcripts which have been uh, upregulated and uh, um, and there are thresholds for um, for each of these transcripts. Uh, uh, again, a lot of this is based on animal data. And initially, when the algorithm was developed, it is it is based on uh, the the kidney MMDX data as well, because there are a lot of common pathways for rejection across organ systems. So since we've gone through, you know, how to interpret the report and how, uh, you know, uh, and what are the basis for all of these um, uh, classifications of rejection and the molecular signatures for rejection, I think it's time for us to uh, get into our patient cases and sort of see in the real world how this could be used and how, uh, you know, to make uh, uh, treatment decisions for patients. So this is our first patient. Uh, it's a 63-year-old man with ischemic cardiomyopathy uh, and had an uneventful transplant. He was not sensitized. And the only eventful post-transplant course in the first uh, six months was he had a week to uh, two hour um, acute cellular or T-cell uh, mediated rejection, which was treated with steroids. Now at uh, month six, he under you know as a part of our protocol, he underwent a surveillance echo, which showed normal EF, and um, he had a surveillance biopsy as well, which showed uh, ACR one um, hemodynamics. However, his allo map was elevated, and allo show was 0.9 percent. So there was some uh, signal here suggesting. Uh, that there was some uh, ongoing tissue injury. Uh, 
for for people who do not use uh, heart care you know it is a non invasive uh, screening tool for rejection and allosure is essentially a measure of cell free dna and the threshold here is actually 0.12% it is a very good uh, it has a very good negative predictive value which means if if the cell free dna is less than 0.12% that means the patient does not have rejection uh, or uh, there is uh, a very uh, low likelihood of him having rejection. So here, the cell free DNA is 0.97%. Yet, when we look at the biopsy in histopathology, he just had uh, um, acute cellular rejection or T-cell mediated rejection rating of 1R and uh, no C4D deposition. So then we went ahead and sent off an MMDX because there was a suspicion there was a discrepancy here right because the allosure is elevated however you know uh, our histopathology did not really show any significant rejection and this came back saying there is an abnormal heart transplant biopsy with mild antibody mediated rejection no t cell mediated rejection uh, and there was minimal parenchymal injury with well differentiated parenchyma so this sort of led to us wondering why why does this patient have you know a possible uh, mild antibody mediated rejection because again the C4D was negative. Uh, so we went ahead and sent off the DSA. DSA was negative. However, the non-HLA antibody panel came back uh, with elevated uh, 81R at 40, and the and the cutoff here is less than 10. And uh, the mica was negative, and endothelial cross match was positive for EC1 and uh, EC2. Um, so, this was what the report looked like. And I want you to pay attention to the yellow triangle in the bottom, which is again showing that uh, this patient is very similar to all those patients who've had ABMR, and both in print, uh, you know, in uh, um, in, in the archetypal analysis of PC1 versus PC2 and PC2 and PC3, uh, it uh, essentially um, confirms that the patient um, could have uh, antibody mediated rejection. And again, when we go back, you know, went back and looked, he of course had a non HLA antibody, which now explains why the patient could have had that elevation in uh, cell free DNA uh, as well. So then we went ahead and uh, treated the patient with five cycles of plasma ferrocyte with steroid pulse. He got IVIG. Unfortunately, he had developed a decubitus post transplant and was healing it, had an, it was infected previously. So we elected not to do a rituxan. But uh, since there is some data that with uh, you know, patients with 81R antibody that uh, ARBs could be effective, the patient went on long-term post So the learning points here are that in patients with elevated cell-free DNA and no evidence of histologic or immunofluorescence evidence of rejection, MMDX could be helpful in diagnosing rejection. Now, increasingly, this is a phenomenon which is being recognized in, in kidney and in fact, in the latest BAN conference, they uh, went ahead and actually um, uh, included this as a diagnosis where C4D negative AMR uh, is being increasingly diagnosed. And they are using essentially molecular signature to diagnose this. And I think in the last few years, we have understood the pathology of AB ABMR better where it seems like the NK cells are playing a big role and that's why you're having a lot of C4D negative uh, <coughs> biopsy specimens. <clears throat> and um, uh, again, also elevated cell-free DNA in, in, the, in, in the kidney literature seems to correlate more with the molecular variables um, uh, when compared to uh, histopathologic uh, variables, at least in kidney transplants. And these may well, well be the case in heart, but uh, that data has, has not come out yet. Now let's go to our second patient. So this patient is a 49-year-old male, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. He had an LVAD for almost four years, and then he got infected, then he got transplanted post-op. Post-operatively, uh, um, you know, his, his course was significant for 
uh, really severe post-cardiotomy syndrome. Patient had pleural effusions, pericardial effusions. Uh, however, his uh, uh, week, the first two biopsies, week one and week two, uh, were uh, negative for both ACR and um, or, or TCMR and uh, AVMR. Uh, however, the week three um, biopsy, surveillance biopsy, uh, was positive for TCMR uh, grade 2R and C4D was 0%. Hemodynamics was normal, echo function was normal. So this was um, uh, also in the setting of uh, therapeutic uh, prograph levels and on a good dose of uh, uh, mycophenolate as well as steroids. So this was a little unusual. So uh, we had sent up MMDX and uh, it showed that there was uh, uh, no ABMR uh, and no TCMR um, and minimal parenchymal injury and um, with some parenchymal redifferentiation. So also uh, this patient's DSA was negative and did not have any non-HLA antibodies either. So um, uh, this goes on to uh, you know, demonstrate a very important uh, phenotype, especially early after transplant, where there are multiple reasons for the patients to have injury or myocardial injury. Most commonly would be cold ischemia, you know, um, injury due to brain death in the donor. But in our patient, uh, we think he had inflammation and injury because of severe post-cardiotomy syndrome, which wherein he had uh, significant pleural and pericardial inflammation. And uh, as you can see here, this yellow triangle, which is our patient, he really was in, in the no rejection zone. However, he did have parenchymal injury, there was no doubt, but it seemed like uh, even though there was injury, there was an alternative explanation for the injury and the inflammation it was not necessarily related to rejection. So the learning point from this patient is that, you know, injury can oftentimes be misread as T-cell mediated rejection or histopathology. And MMDX can actually help us differentiate injury due to rejection uh, from injury alone due to other causes like we um, just discussed. And uh, uh, I think this is, uh, this has not been studied, but, it potentially could prevent uh, overtreatment of rejection. And like we discussed, you know, in our patient, there was an alternative explanation for the injury and inflammation um, that this patient had. Now let's go to our uh, patient number three. Uh, this is a 40-year-old woman who had non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, was not sensitized, had a uh, a heart transplant. And in week one, uh, she had a normal functioning graft on echo. However, her biopsy showed a TCMR grade of 3R with negative C4D or C4D of 0%. Hemodynamics did show that the filling pressures, both wedge and right atrial pressure, were elevated with normal cardiac output. So then, uh, you know, we, uh, as it is our practice, we went ahead and sent off an MMDX, which confirmed what histopathology showed, that there was TCMR-like inflammation and there was extensive parenchymal injury suggestive that the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the rejection was quite severe, uh, that it was, uh, you know, a three-hour rejection. So then this patient was treated with IV steroids and uh, we were able to get the patient with the therapeutic prograph levels. Uh, and this was uh, essentially how this patient's report looked like. And as you can see here, the yellow triangle is way out here on the you know, PC1 axis towards TCMR. And um, the same here on the, on the other graph where you could see that, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, patient uh, truly has, you know, bad, uh, significant injury as well as uh, decelerated. Now, this patient um, then uh, uh, had another biopsy in week three, and here, lo and behold, patient still uh, had, uh, was at least, uh, the biopsy was read off as TCMR grade 2R with negative C4D, 
the hemodynamics had normalized and echo ejection fraction remained the same as 55 to 60%. So this, you know, begs the question of, you know, what are we dealing with here? Whether do we, is this just resolving rejection or is this, you know, uh, steroid resistant rejection, which means we'll have to escalate treatment. Um, so that's where our MMDX, uh, you know, analysis was helpful in this patient where this, uh, the molecular signature seemed to suggest that there was no ABMR, there was no TCMR. However, there was still parenchymal injury. Uh, so likely this was a, a resolving rejection and we didn't have to treat this patient as somebody with steroid uh, resistant uh, rejection. So we continued the patient with maintenance immunosuppression and subsequently uh, the patient's biopsy became zero R and the patient is doing fine now. So uh, again, looking, going over the patient's report, as you can see here, the, the yellow triangle is well within uh, in, the, in the low rejection zone. And uh, so do all, the, it's confirmed by all the models as well. So a learning point, uh, at least uh, for us from this case was that MMDS could help us differentiate resolving or resolved, reject resolved rejection compared to just histologic changes alone. In conclusion, uh, you know, all these three cases do uh, illustrate to us that diagnosing rejection can be challenging in some patients due to overlapping features of injury and rejection. Um, and especially histologic changes with AMR may not be readily evident, especially in patients with C4D negative rejection. And MMDX can provide us more information in these clinical settings to confirm or strengthen our clinical suspicions so that we can act upon um, these in a more definitive way. Uh, and uh, molecular phenotyping can be a valuable uh, additive tool uh, to histopathology uh, so that we can take care of our patients better. With this, uh, we'll uh, conclude this uh, webinar and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank you, Dr. Guha, um, for this wonderful presentation and thank everyone who joined us today. Uh, it was actually very informative um, and especially for me. But this concludes our webcast. Um, thank you again for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.